one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I love this story because the Bible is real, children. So David's hiding in the cave because what happened is there came a point where David, when Saul was trying to kill David, and David's on the run. He's not even being a general anymore. He's running. So one of the places he does, he runs and hides in a cave. Saul don't know he's there. So the Bible says Saul came in to relieve himself. You can interpret that how you want to. So when you're relieving yourself, you're pretty much what? Vulnerable. You know, you're dead. Guess who's in the cave? David didn't do anything. There was another time in the Bible where he had another chance. He came up on Saul and Saul was asleep. When you're most vulnerable, when you sleep. But what David did, and he wasn't as nice this time. He did cut some of his robe off. He didn't wake him up. He didn't wake him up. <laughs> cut his robe, went off. Here comes Saul up on the hill, right? David's away. He's like, hey, hey, I just want to let you know. I could have kicked you out, buddy, but I didn't because I respect who you are. Right? He did become spiteful. So I think that's the first, first thing you don't. Don't be surprised. Don't be spiteful. Because what happens if you become spiteful and you start being that way? You're going to become very silent. Nobody likes an old silent person. Amen. Don't become silent. Let me tell you what. We live in a real world and you're going to get hurt. Right? You're going to get hurt. Everybody say, I'm going to be hurt. Get say, duh, I've already been hurt. That's what you need to say. You've already been hurt. Right? So the key is to make sure that your story is protected is to make sure you're not surprised that there are people out there that are going to try to hurt you. And then when they do, don't get spiteful. And please don't become silent. Because unfortunately in the church, there's a lot of silent people. They sit in the pew and all they do is complain to the preacher. Well, preacher, man, you, you preach too long. Can you make those people act right in the sanctuary? Can, can, you, can, you, can you make the music do different? I mean, I've heard it all. I'm like, why don't you get Jesus? Hello, what being so sour? But that's what happens to people over life. Now, I was talking about the younger Christians because the younger Christians, I see them a lot like David. They just don't care. They just want to love Jesus. But what happens to us, older Christians, and I'm talking to myself, what happens to us older Christians is we fall into a category that becomes very sour. For some reason, we just get into this mode of just doing things. You just go to church, but your life isn't changing at all. You're still the same person you were 20 years ago. God hadn't touched your heart in so long, you didn't even know what it feels like anymore. You're being faithful, and that's good, and I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just telling you, you don't want to become sour in your life. And all you do is sit back and be critical, man. You need to be caught up in praising Jesus because the world, these young Christians need to show, you need to show them that, that being a Christian is a lifelong experience. And when you get where I am, I'm just like Paul. Boom, I'm going to run this race and I'm not stopping. I still love God. People need to know that in your place in your life, that life hasn't soured you. And it's still there. Two more things I'm going to be real fast. Here's number four. And I know what everybody said. Well, you don't know who I'm dealing with. So here's number four. This is yours. Don't be stupid. That's your fourth S word. Don't be stupid, right? That was one thing. You've got to admit the one thing about David, you know, here he is up on that hill and he's holding up Saul's robe that he had cut off, right? And Saul says, oh, come on down. You know, I forgive you. Let's be buddies again. Let's hang out again. Let's play music again. And David said, no, nah, I don't trust you. I love you. I forgive you, but I ain't going there no more. <laughs> Church, don't be stupid. Don't keep going down the same road. You've got to figure out a way to protect your heart. If somebody continues to lead you down that road, you can forgive them, you can love them, but you can't go down that road anymore. It's destroying you. It is. 
Some of you today are here and you're sitting there and your heart is so calloused. And it's because somebody in your life has made it that way. And you've got to figure out a way to say, I can't be stupid about this. I can't keep giving you my heart and let you crush it. There's a way, like David, he never lost respect for the king. But he didn't give him that role anymore. You saw that? King, I could have killed you, but I didn't because I still respect you. I forgive you. But King, we're not playing the harp anymore. That's over. I can't go down that road anymore. All right? Last thing is this. Number five. Don't stop. And I know that's what most of you are saying about my sermon. <laughs> Amen. Don't stop. Don't stop. And I think that's the key. Whatever you are this morning, I know there's some hurt people out there that have been hurt by hurt people. Heartbreaking. Thank God brought you here today. Brought you here to talk to you. To say, whatever you do, don't stop. And just don't stop. I know you've been hurt. Life has soured you just a little bit. In some ways, you have a spitefulness inside of you and you want to lash back. You're at a place where you got surprised by that person. And you're trying not to be anymore, but they continue to call you and surprise you. Man, all of a sudden, man, you're, you're beginning to get very sour. You don't know what to do with that. The key is you've got to keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm going to ask you to stay in the building where we pray today. As I told you, I had the guys come in. We, we have prayer in my office every Sunday at 10.30 for myself, very selfishly, but I asked them to come in and pray for me. If you'd like to come here and pray with us, that's fine. You don't have to be a guy, you be a girl, that's fine. We're just praying for the service of people here. And I asked them today, Lord, please help me have boldness. Because I think what we need, what I need is boldness to tell you that to tell you what God's Word says, because I believe there are people here that have been hurt by the world, been hurt by family members, been hurt by sons and daughters, and now their heart, man, it's just become so hard. So you got to figure out how to get past that. And I really believe today God wants to do some help. He does. I'm going to pray for you. Dear Father, Lord, you know <clears throat> each person in this congregation Lord, I, I just want to always be faithful to preach your word, and Lord, you led us here today. We heard this great testimony, this testimony that April and Toby gave this morning about what God's doing in their life, looking forward to hearing the others, to hear these testimonies of people that are just starting out in life, their story is just beginning. And we'll hear from people that's got stories that is a lifelong process. They're still hanging on. And I know there are people here today that have been on this journey for a while, and Lord, they, they've kind of gotten silent. They've allowed things to happen in their life that are just about taking any kind of love, any kind of feeling inside, they, it's taking it away. And God, they need healing. So if you're here today, and God, Nobody looking around. It's just me. And maybe God needs to do some healing on your heart today. I want to, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Amen. I see that. See that hand? I see those hands. Thank you very much. I see that. Hand. All right. Maybe you're here today and you're just starting on this journey and you're, you're excited. It seems like, man, these sharks, these buzzards are all of a sudden all around you. And you're trying your best to rise out of what you've been in. And it seems like there's always somebody there to try to pull you back down. And you need, you need courage, you need boldness, you need a, a new feeling today. And, and you're saying, Rachel, please, please pray for me. I want you to raise your hand. And it's God, God speaking to you. Amen. Let me pray for these. Dear Lord, you've seen hands go up all over this congregation. Lord, what a great story. What a great story of two men that, have, that are literally going in two different ways. Lord, it just shows you that in life, even if you're a part of this kingdom, you can become very envious. You can become very jealous. You can be become very uh, jaded, Lord, by the things that are going on. 
we can look at people and become jealous of what's happening to them. And Lord, it's easy to happen. And we know the devil splits churches that way. He drives people away from his kingdom. The devil loves that. He loves to play in that playground. And Lord, at the same time, you have those that are trying their best just to be a believer. They're trying their best to get up each day and fight the things that come up against them. They're the ones that are going through these battles and Lord, their heart continues to get broken. And Lord, they just don't know how they can keep going. Lord, you know who that is today and we pray for them. We pray for each hand that is going up. We Lord, we pray for that healing. We pray, God, you touch them today. Lord, we pray you give them a renewed spirit today. Lord, they refine the things that they need to refine, Lord. That fire, Lord, just kind of went down to a flicker. Lord, may your spirit just blow in a tremendous way. And Lord, all of a sudden, they can see things differently. Because they're not seeing it from their perspective. Today, they see it from your perspective. And Lord, your perspective is you love everybody. And you're bringing people to where they need to be. So Lord, give them faith while they wait. Lord, for that one that's been broken so much today, Lord, I pray for a tremendous healing in their life. God, I pray your spirit would do its work today. Lord, I know without a doubt, Lord, you touch life today. And you touch some people, and I thank you for that. And Lord, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I need to do two things. Two things real quick. We have, the second thing is we've got somebody that's going to join the church today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right? So they're giving a birthday present to somebody else today by doing this. So I'm going to figure it Oh, no, we're going to bring you up in just a minute. But I want to ask Renee to come down real quick. Uh, Tracy Moore has asked Renee to come stand in her place. If you're friends with her on Facebook, you know what's going on. So we're going to ask some of you to come down. We won't say what it is, but she wants to stand. She wants Renee to stand for her on behalf of her son, Taylor. So if, if you can come down and you can be right there where you're at. If you don't feel comfortable, just reach out because we need to pray. They, they need Fair Dear Father, we want to come to you right now. We want to do we do want to lift up Tracy and Caleb today, Lord. If there's anything that needs to take place, it's that, Lord. You need to move into this this uh this is this situation. Lord, you need to be with Caleb, Lord. He's making decisions that aren't very good, Lord, they're very dangerous. And Lord, we need you to step in and do your work, Lord. Father, we need you to help him to find his right mind, Lord, so he can begin to do the right things. But, Lord, while that's happening, Lord, Tracy needs your help. Her heart is breaking today. She's way off, not even close, but she needs, she can't do anything. I know she feels helpless. I know her heart's breaking today. So, Lord, I pray you, t wherever she's at today, at this very moment, Lord, bring, go into that room where she's at, wherever she's sitting today. Father, may you move in in a tremendous way with your spirit. May you give her a sense of peace to know, Father, you're with her, but most of all, that you're doing the work with him, and Lord, you're bringing him where he needs to be, so God, we thank you so much for what you're going to do, and we pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. All right, Mom, Deb, come on down here. Hey, I know most of y'all thought this guy was already with him, right? Well, let me tell you, I appreciate this guy. He, uh, he is a... God did good when he sent us here, right? You don't know how good tip they are. They do a great job. And we're excited uh, to have Rondell come today and join the church. He said he's doing this for, for as a birthday gift to Gary Ball. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's kind of neat. All right, so this is the Lord's Supper. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, the precious and uh, blessings uh, which we uh, have an association together in the Church of Jesus Christ are very sacred and precious. There is in it such hallowed fellowship as cannot otherwise be known. There is in it such help, uh, helpfulness and brotherly watch, care, and counsel as can be only found in the church. There is the godly care of pastor with the teachings of the word. There is the helpful inspiration of social worship which we just experienced. There is the cooperation and service accomplishing that which it cannot otherwise be done. The doctrines in which we stand uh, rest, or rest are essential to the Christian experience, and here they are. We believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which best emphasize the Holy Spirit, the deity of Jesus Christ, and the personality of the Holy Spirit. We believe that man is born in sin, that he needs the work of forgiveness, 
through, Je through Christ and the new birth by the Holy Spirit. Uh, after that, there's a deeper work of the heart, of the heart cleansing called the power of sanctification through the healing of the Holy Spirit and that each of these works of grace, the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe the Lord will return, the dead shall be raised, and then after that will come the final judgment, its rewards, and its punishment. Do you heartily believe these truths? If so, answer, I do. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you realize that he saves you now? If so, say, I do. All right, well, I welcome you. Well, we do want to thank you so much for sending Rondell. We thank you so much for his family. Lord, uh, when you sent, when you sent uh, Lou here, Lord, and her family started coming, it was just a great, great thing for our church. Lord, they are just workers. They come in, they do all these things that they do. When we know Rondell comes up, he helps clean the church, he's back there cooking some days. Or whatever you ask him to do, he just steps up. He's like a David, Lord. He just does it, doesn't look back, and I thank you so much for that. So, Lord, I pray you. Help us to be the church that he needs, or that he can lead into when he needs it, or as he walks through some of the things that he'll walk through, and what he's already walked through. Lord, we pray for blessings in his life, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. We need to pray for Sean Riddle Woodall, his brother. His brother. We need to pray. Let me pray for him. Dear Father, Lord, uh, we do pray for the Woodall family. We know they're going through a tremendous, tremendous loss right now. Lord, I know there's a lot of confusion happening, a lot of questions, a lot of lies. Why this happen? Lord, they need your help. We lift up Sean to you. Lord, help him to, to be the kind of brother that he needs to be to his brother as they walk through this valley. Lord, may you speak to them. And we know that you're a God that can bring peace in a situation like this. So we you do that for them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.